Hello, this is Brian Gershio, Product Support Manager here at Tectone, and in this section we will cover programming and tuning the door controller. Before beginning the tuning process, remove the cover of the door controller using the included driver. Once the cover is removed, note the removable terminal blocks and large wiring diagram inside the front cover of the door controller. In addition to the wiring connections, now is a good time to familiarize yourself with the tuning capacitors that will be used in later steps. Note that there are three tuning capacitors, one each for the X, Y, and Z axes. It is important to note that the tuning must be done once the door controller is completely wired and installed in its permanent location. Tuning is heavily dependent on environmental factors and no two door controllers will be tuned exactly the same way. Here is an example of a door controller that has been completely wired. From left to right are the connections for the keypad, magnetic switch contacts, mag lock, power connection, and the two terminal blocks for the TechCare 700 network. These terminals are used to connect door controllers and display units together on the network. Each door controller must be assigned a unique address to communicate on the TechCare 700 network. When the door controllers are shipped, they are all assigned to address 30. The next few steps will show you how to assign a unique address and make several other critical adjustments to the door controller. In order to connect the door controller for programming, we'll be using the CA702 USB to serial adapter included with your starter kit. Using this wiring diagram, connect the CA702 to either 3-pin terminal block at TB6 or TB7. You may use any multi-conductor cable for this short programming cable. Connect the CA702 to an open USB port on a laptop that can be carried to each door controller. Windows should automatically find and install the drivers for the CA702 and assign a COM port to it. Starting at the first door controller to be programmed, remove the TechCare 700 network connections from TB6 and TB7. Connect the programming cable to either location. With the door controller powered on, set both switches on SW1 to the up position. This puts the door controller in programming mode. Cycle power to the unit by pressing the red reset switch. Once the drivers for the CA702 are installed, the programming cable has been connected and the door controller has been placed in programming mode, we can begin programming the controller. Click Start, Control Panel, and Search for Device Manager. Click on Device Manager when it appears in the list below. Expand the ports list by clicking on the small arrow beside Ports icon. From the list that appears, find the USB serial port that was created by the CA702. In our case, it is COM8 because that's the next available open port but your assigned COM port may be different. Note the COM port and close the window. You will need to use a terminal emulation program such as PuTTY to configure the door controller. In PuTTY, set the serial line to match the assigned COM port. The speed should be 115200. In the category list, select Serial and ensure that the serial line to connect to is set to your assigned COM port and that the speed is 115200. Data bit should be set to 8, stop bit should be set to 1. Set parity to none and flow control to none. Click on behavior and give the window a title. Next click window to ensure that the window is set to 80 columns and 59 rows. This will help the menu display correctly. Click terminal and deselect the check boxes in the top section. Only check the implicit line feed in every carriage return box in the top section. In the lower section, set local echo to force on and local line editing to auto. Ensure that none is selected in the printer output drop down menu. Finally, click session. Type a name for the connection in the save sessions box. This ensures that you will not need to manually change all of these settings the next time you need to connect to an NC702. Click the Save button, then open the connection. A blank command window will appear. Press Enter to call up the main menu. 
If the information is garbled, or the letters on the left do not align with the options on the right, change the position of the JP1 jumper in the upper right hand corner of the NC702 circuit board. When the menu appears, note that the upper and lower case selection letters do different things. For example, lowercase g is read transmit frequency, while uppercase g is enable door ajar alarm monitoring. The first thing we will do is verify the existing address of the door controller. Type the lowercase r and press the enter key. A new menu will appear and the return value will be shown above the menu. Depending on your screen resolution, scrolling may or may not be necessary. In this case, we see that the door controller is assigned to address 30. To change this address, we type a lowercase q and press enter. A submenu appears to input the address. Type in the desired address and press enter. Above the menu, the return will show the address that was entered. If we again use the lowercase r to check the address of the door controller, the returned address is shown as 1. If two door controllers are located within 15 feet of each other, stagger tuning must be used. There are nine channels available for use on the NC702 door controller. Option lowercase w will return the current channel assignment. To change the channel, Use option lowercase v to type in a new channel number. Press enter to set the channel. The next thing we will do is set the tuning of the door controller. Lowercase f will return the current digital pot values of the three axes. The values shown here are the default values and result in the largest possible transmit field around the door controller. The available adjustment range is 44 to 66 with 44 resulting in a transmit field that is approximately 5 to 8 feet in diameter and 66 given a transmit field of approximately 13 to 15 feet in diameter. The next step is to adjust the tuning capacitors in order to obtain the optimal drive strength. Use option lowercase a to display the current drive strength. Note the current values. Each of these values should be as close to 800 as possible but must be above 750. Use a screwdriver to adjust the tuning capacitors. An LED bar graph beside each capacitor shows the relative strength of the antenna. Keep in mind that while adjusting these tuning capacitors, phase lock must be preserved. Phase lock is indicated by a solid green LED. If the red LED on either side is lit, continue adjusting the tuning capacitors until phase lock is achieved. Once you have adjusted the tuning capacitors, reread the drive strengths of the antennas using the lowercase a command. If the values are all above 750, move on to the next step. If any of the values are below 750, retune the capacitors and recheck the drive strength while being careful to maintain phase lock. Next, we will change the digital pot values to affect the size of the transmit field. Use lowercase option e to call up the transmit receive gain submenu. When the submenu appears, enter option lowercase b to change the x-axis gain. Enter the desired value and press enter to set. Only change options b, c, and d. Do not change options a, E or F unless instructed to by Tectone Technical Support. Repeat the same process for the Y and Z axes. Tectone recommends setting all the axes to the same value, testing for satisfactory operation and adjusting as necessary. To test the transmit field, activate the test tag included with your starter kit. Walk around the door controller and note at what distance the red LED illuminates solid. This indicates the extent of the transmit field. Be sure to tune the door controller transmit field to provide coverage for the entire exit. If the field is too large, the door controller may activate tags in adjacent rooms and cause nuisance alarms. Note that option lowercase f will display the current digital pot values in the configuration of the door controller. 
There are many more settings and timers that can be adjusted in this menu, such as door jar times, loiter times, and much more. For a full explanation, see the documentation included with your system. Once configuration is complete, the door controller must be returned to the run mode. Set the switches on SW1 so that switch 1 is in the down position and 2 is in the up position. Cycle power to the unit by pressing the red reset switch. Reconnect the TechCare 700 network with TB6 and TB7. Replace the cover and the door controller is now ready for use. Be sure to watch the third video in this series to learn how to configure the CT701 and set up the TechCare system configuration.